A British steam-powered sailing ship, the Lord Spencer was built in 1865 under the original name SS Java. Her tonnage was 2,696 gross registered tons. She was 337 feet long rounded down, and her beam was 43 feet rounded up. Under the name SS Java, she was built for the Cunard Line in Glasgow by the J.G. Thompson and Company, and she was launched on June 24th, 1865. Her maiden voyage was from Liverpool to Queenstown to New York. Later in her career, the Java was renamed to the SS Zealand in 1878, to the Electrique in 1889, and then finally, the Lord Spencer in 1892. Originally, the Lord Spencer was only built to be a sailing ship, but she was refitted with steam engines in 1877, and she was then shortly after sold to the Red Star Line and renamed for the first time. Twelve years later was when she was sold to her second owners and given her second name, and then in 1892 she was sold for the third time and given her final name. One passenger who sailed on her wrote the following words. There were only four good ships of the Cunard Company in the Liverpool service in 1873. Russia, Scotia, Cuba, and Java. The two former were sidewheelers and were largely advertised as carrying no steerage passengers. Among old travelers, the two latter ships were respectively called the Rolling Cuba and the Jumpin' Java. From the certain peculiarities manifested by these ships in heavy weather, not especially conducive to the comfort of the passengers. Despite this issue that arose when in heavy seas, she must have been magnificent to see in her glory if she left such an impression. One can only imagine what a magnificent sight the Lord Spencer would have been as she sailed proudly across the seas. Even after being outfitted with steam engines, the Lord Spencer still had her sails. Like many other ships from the time, it was very common for steamships to break down because their engines failed. And since this was before wireless technology was put onto ships, then they needed another way to still make it to port, or they would be drifting until hopefully someone else came passing by who could tow them in. The liner California experienced this exact scenario in the late 19th century, when she was found by the Bywell Castle, as did the Wabino in 1868. But her passengers had an even more lucky escape than those of the California. Their ship had struck an iceberg and was sinking when the city of Boston happened to sail by and save everyone before the Wabino went down. The Lord Spencer never undertook such a daring rescue by chance, but she enjoyed many crossings and voyages all over the ocean in her 30-year career and I'm sure that she was loved by many of those that sailed upon her. But her fate was to be a mysterious and tragic one, and one shrouded in many unanswered questions. During a voyage in 1895, the Lord Spencer went missing while traveling her route around South America from San Francisco to New York. No one knows what truly happened to the ship, but a story that a small group of survivors found in a lifeboat from a different ship told after being picked up from the sea tells a chilling story. On a calm night in the southern Atlantic Ocean, the fully rigged sailing ship Prince Oscar was making her way across the seas. She was smaller than the Lord Spencer at 1292 gross registered tons, but their ages were the same. She had also been built and launched in 1865 and it seemed destiny was to bring these two old vessels together in the cruelest way possible. The Prince Oscar was out in the southern Atlantic Ocean on the night of July 13, 1895, off the eastern coast of Brazil, on a voyage from Shields with a cargo of coal. This routine voyage was interrupted by a terrifying sight, one of the most chilling that you could ever see on the ocean at night. The night was routine and quiet, but suddenly, from out of the darkness, the form of a massive passenger liner appeared next to the Prince Oscar. Sailing with no lights on, she was coming straight at the Prince Oscar in total silence. It's like a ghost ship story. It is an absolutely chilling image to imagine, let alone have actually seen. The crew of the Prince Oscar could only watch as this massive dark shape drew closer, and then the two ships smashed together. The mystery ship went down so fast following the collision 
that no one on the Prince Oscar could get a good look to identify her or maybe see her name. Not that they had time. Their ship was quickly following the ghostly one to the bottom, and they rushed to get the lifeboats ready before they went with it. The mystery ship sank nearly instantly, and the Prince Oscar followed her in only ten minutes. For three days, the few Prince Oscar survivors drifted in a lifeboat before they were found by another vessel traveling from London to Melbourne, and they were taken to Philadelphia by a second ship, and this is where that tale comes from. Those lost on the Prince Oscar include Seward J. Anderson, Cabin Boy August Carton, Seaman D. Kelp, Oscar Nielsen, and E. Peterson, and Cook W. Knight. I think that if I could witness anything from this story personally, I would want to see what was going on in the bridge in the wheelhouse of the mystery ship. Did her crew even see the Prince Oscar? Why were there no lights on? Why did it seem like she made a direct beeline for the Prince Oscar instead of trying to turn? What acts of heroism might have played out on the mystery liner as she sank? Someone helping another person up? Someone stepping aside for another to pass through a door first? Helping someone out of a spot they were trapped? Someone going back into the sinking ship for a friend? Crew helping passengers where they could? People becoming trapped with no one around to help them? Panicked screams in the dark hallways and cabins as the water roared inside. And other stories that played out inside the ship are all lost stories to history. The mystery liner sank so fast that the few Prince Oscar survivors barely got a glimpse of her. Of all those on board the Prince Oscar, six survived. Of all those who were on board the mystery liner, none survived. It is thought by many historians that this mystery liner was, in fact, the Lord Spencer. Other ships did vanish in the same area at the same time, but most historians still agree that the Lord Spencer is the most likely candidate for the ship that struck the Prince Oscar, based on the few details the crew of the Prince Oscar could see of the mystery liner. The vague details fit the Lord Spencer over any of those other ships. There are other theories about what happened to the Lord Spencer too, but none of these are seen as likely as the theory of her being the ship that struck the Prince Oscar is. Today, the Lord Spencer does not enjoy the legacy of a liner like the Titanic. She is all but forgotten entirely, as are the stories which played out on her in this final voyage. Her wreck rests somewhere on the bottom of the ocean, undiscovered to this day and that will likely never change. Do you think this forgotten passenger liner struck the Prince Oscar, or do you think another fate befell her? Tell me in a comment.